Y'all have fun. I'm here, Matt Bronson from Crowbar, and he's a black belt in Machado Jiu Jitsu today here at the camp. So let me talk with you a little bit, Matt, about uh, uh, so people get to know that besides a musician and you've been doing martial arts for many years, how did, when did you start your journey in martial arts? Uh, well, I guess it started uh, when I was very young. My father was a professional boxer. And, uh, so I grew up uh, a little bit of boxing, and then of course when I was a kid, I got involved with, you know, like most kids, taekwondo and uh, judo and everything like that. And then I took a break for a little while when I was in high school. Uh, started playing music, so martial arts kind of fell a little bit to the side. And then when I my early 20s, I started again. I started training with uh, Frank Crazy at Louisiana Martial Art Academy, uh, doing hapkido. All right. And we started doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu very shortly after that, and that's when we came to to Dallas and train with Carlos and in fact my first ever seminar where I learned from somebody that wasn't Carlos was actually when you taught a seminar at Carlos's Academy so man that's a what what oh seven or eight or something like that yeah, something like that yeah it was like, like 12 13 years ago man yeah. long time ago so we fantastic so it's been in jiu-jitsu how many is in jiu-jitsu how many years yeah uh but 12 or 13 years 12 or 13 yeah. years in, in jiu-jitsu amazing so in so in, in the Doing a parallel to, in your music career, when did you did you start? When did and, I start? Yeah, when did you start on your music career? And from my question, when did you start? And when did it did you did it happen to you? Like you, you realize, like man, this is it, and you start out going that route. <laughs> well, I started playing. I was always interested in music. Always loved music. I started actually. My parents got me an electric guitar when I was about eleven. So okay. I started playing when I was 11, and you know, in some circles, that's kind of a late bloomer, you know, even though I was very young. Um, and I just played in local bands, you know, meet up with guys, and um, just through playing in a lot of local bands, you know, you kind of get your name out there. Oh, that guy's pretty good, or oh, that you know, he's a really good guy to work with, you know, and he's professional. So um, my one of my old bands, we actually opened up for uh, Crowbar. Um, before I was in the band, so I got oh. to know uh, Kirk, uh, Kirk Winstein, the singer. Oh, right. uh, kind of the, the he's the he's the main guy in the band. You know, started from day one, but we became friends first. You know, and we used to hang, we used to go hang at his house, and we liked a lot of the same guitar players. And uh, we used to just go, you know, hang out, watch, you know, American football, and uh, play guitar and everything. And then eventually, it got to the point where one of the other guys was was leaving. He decided to you know just uh, do something different. Yeah. So he called me up. And he said, Hey, man, you know, you know just come. You want to come help us? You know, come help me jam a little bit, and uh, I'd actually filled in for them like a couple of years before uh -huh. that. When uh, S Steve Gibb, the guitar player at the time, he was uh, he had some other obligations and he couldn't, so I, I learned the songs. We went and did a couple of gigs. So I already kind of played in the band, but he yeah. said, "Man, just come help me rehearse." And so we rehearsed a little bit, and then one day, at that point, we were actually living together, sharing, renting a house wow. together, and wow. we were just sitting there, like I think we like ordered some pizza or whatever, and he just looked at me and goes, "Man, you're in the band." So, what, what year was that that you joined uh, uh, Crowbar? That was. Wow, let's see. Um, two th I think it was like 2006. So I've been in the band almost 10 years now. So uh, during that, at that time, you were already, uh, that was already your life. That's what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to do that from a very early age. Like when I first, when, by the time I was 11, I started playing guitar. I was like, man, I want to do this for a living. Not to be famous, really, not to be a millionaire, but I said, man, if I can make a living doing this, you know, if I can keep the lights on, you know, pay my bills, just playing music. Yeah, that's and awesome. So every day's a that's paradise, the, That's you know? the dream, dream yeah, yeah. Too. That's awesome. Yeah, very and fortunate for that. So, and how's been your journey through music since then? Crowbar? It, it's been great, you know, we get to, I get to travel a lot of great places with all, with my friends, and we get to play music for a lot of people that are really appreciative, and get to see things that I never thought I'd ever see, you know. Uh, we've been to Russia, seen Red Square, I mean, wow. we've been to... You know, we've seen all sorts of amazing things, been in amazing places, and, uh, I, you know, uh, one day we'll get to Brazil. Oh, no, it's going to happen, man. Yeah. I know the the, the, Bra the Brazilian fans, they, they, they like it. You know, awesome. they, I know the heavy metal scene in Brazil, it's alive, and they have a lot of bands, but like I, like I was uh, talking to you, the, the way the, the, the market and the industry works, and they're pushing the, a, lot, a lot of the, the just... What I see, I'm not, I'm not a professor, my opinion, the com, just the, the very purely commercial and right, purely right. Uh, pop. Right. You know what I mean? Purely pop. So that's the, the, what's happening in Brazil. But through the internet and uh, 
it, there are amazing bands that I see all the time, like I was saying, and, and, and kind of they're they coming through these ways, and they have their own following, their yeah. own Facebooks, and they, they, their CDs, yeah. their shows. Well, yeah, it's a great it's a great network, you know, just to, for people to know what's out there, because, you know, way back in the day, um, there was like underground people trading cassette tapes, things like yeah. that. That was how you got to, you found a guy, man, I got these great bands, you just trade tapes, you know, send them in the mail, but with, you know, the internet, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all the social media, you can find a lot of new bands. And the thing with the pop and everything is, you know, the, the big companies like to force the uh, force the pop music, and I understand, they're, they're trying to make a living, that's their business, they want to yeah, push their artists, course, but yeah, the not? thing is, it's like everybody likes to eat, but not everybody likes to eat the same thing. I you know? agree, so, I agree, 100%. It's a t the taste is there, yeah. People yeah. want to listen to pop, fantastic, but you got to give uh, people also the option if, if, when they like heavy yeah. metal, they like rock, to listen to it, or they yeah. want to hear the electric, the electric guitar, they, they want to be able to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's the whole thing, you know, it's like, uh, it's it's really funny now when you see, like, uh, you know, they call it they call it music or whatever, you know, and it's like, oh, this, this artist, and it's like, uh, just singing over pre-recorded music, like, there's no instruments, yes. it's yes. like, for me, you get, there's got to be some instruments, somebody has to be playing something, you know, and even if it is just a keyboard, somebody's actually performing the music besides, you know, singing is very... Uh, you have to be very talented to be to be a singer, you know. So that's that. I, I'll never discredit anybody, regardless of what they do. If they're an amazing singer, that takes a lot of talent, a lot of dedication. But like, when you look at the whole picture, and it's like, man, somebody's singing, but it's just like keyboards, or uh, I'm sorry, not keyboards, but like pre-recorded music. Uh, what? Yeah, and just choreographed dancing. Electronic, and all that. electronic yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, we want to see people actually. Uh, demonstrating their craft on stage you know you want to see a band you know at, at least me personally I want to see the guitar player the drummer bass player whatever you know so do you in, in, in your in your uh, style of music right how uh, do you how do you do you, do you, do you guys do you, do you present your style to the to the world how is your community how, how does it work at the shows and well, um, we, we try to do our best, you know, to, to get everywhere, you know, um, you know, hopefully you know, our booking agent tries to get us a lot of different places so we can we can perform for people. And that's the whole thing. You want to put on put on a performance, you know, uh, and our goal, like as a band, like if, if there was, you know, 5,550 or five people, we want to put on the same show. You know, we want people because we're appreciative of the people that, you know, spent their money you know they paid yes, out of there. Yes. they worked all week they made money to come and they paid the ticket to see your show so you you, you know we feel obligated you know like if uh, you know someone had you paid you to come teach a seminar at their yes. academy and you, you didn't show any techniques yes, or you'd act like yes, you didn't want to be yes, there yes. no one would like that but that's the same thing we, we have to perform and the other thing we interact with fans as much as we can you know we're very appreciative uh, of when people come out you know we sign things and you know and just a handshake and you know somebody has a story about uh, their the, how the music has, our music you know has changed their life or how they the they, message yeah, yeah the message, exactly yes. yeah. That, I think that's very important the, music, the, the message in the songs and uh, um, I want to thank I got the, 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 the hat and the t-shirt yeah from Crowbar, that's awesome. And I wanted to ask uh, the, uh, the stuff that I, I even asked here at the seminar, that the guy came on stage, he was drunk, was crazy, and you just held him down, he used jiu-jitsu just to... Well, yeah, well, the whole thing is you just, uh, you know, uh, the security involved, and, you know, sometimes security can't get the whole thing to, to happen, you know, like uh, sometimes people get on stage, they want to be yeah. part of the show, and, you know, sometimes you do have to just, you just have to help them, you know, yeah. like, it's just like, come on, man, uh, it just, you know, nothing crazy, there's no, like, fights or anything yeah. like that, you just, hey, man, it's time time to go. Let the know? show like, go yeah, on, yeah, 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 let yeah. the show go on, yeah. and, and also, um, a couple things, so, the Brazilian bands that you know, that you like, or, or can you tell me if you, Ah, uh, well, of course, uh, the, the main one, the, the most popular for us, like heavy, was always uh, Sepultura. Sepultura. Um, so we've, you know, we always love their music, and of course, uh, Max, uh, he was uh, from Sepultura, he started Soulfly, which is another great band, and we got to tour with them uh, th this year, and Max and Gloria, very uh, great people, um, very cool family vibe, they treated us so well, and... Uh, 
you know, Max is so such a nice guy, man, but such a talented musician. And, uh, you know, you couldn't ask for, like, because, you know, I grew up listening to his music, and then to meet him years later in a more professional oh, setting, and, cool. he, and he's that's just cool. a really cool, down-to-earth guy, you know. So that's awesome. So what's the story of your jacket? You mentioned, ah, you talk about yeah, the jacket so the, yesterday. Yeah, so the, the vest, uh, yeah. this was, Max actually hand-painted this for me, uh, for my birthday, it was my birthday on the tour. And, uh, this is awesome. He, he made, he used to make these, you know, and sell them at the merchandise table. I said, man, those are really cool. And uh, he made, he made, maybe one for my birthday. So I can't, uh, can't thank him enough for so that. That's such a, a cherished gift, you know. From Sepultura to Soulfly, to you. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Absolutely. Man, that's cool, man. So it's a, how do, what now, I want to ask one more thing. How, what, what are the similarities you see between the music, that, the music, your art, and your martial art and jiu-jitsu. Or, oh, well, what are know, the similarities? That you... It's all about expressing yourself first of all. You know, through your movements in martial arts and through you know your notes and the, you know in, with your instrument. But it's you have to um, the whole both of them require a lot of technique and a lot of time, dedication. Uh, some days are better than others. Some days you're very frustrated. You can't like you're trying to learn to play something, and uh, it's really really difficult. There's an idea you have in your head that you really can't execute properly. Uh, you know you just can't get the music out and just or just like a day on the jujitsu mat. You're trying to do a technique and. Uh, Man, you just can't get it, and you just go on, you go on, and it gets frustrating. So you have your, and then you have days where everything locks in, every, you know, every note, everything, on your, every, flows. Yeah, everything flows, every note on your guitar yeah, just yeah, comes yeah. out perfectly, or every every arm bar is just, man, you're hitting it, and it's just, you know, so it, it, it ebbs and flows just like that, very yeah, similar. I, a lot of times I talk, I talk about martial arts, and I'm not a musician, but my father was a musician, so I. I talk about, hey, it's like music, like you're making music. So when I'm with my brothers, like when we have a camp like we had now, the way I relate, even though I'm not a musician, but as a martial artist, I relate like if we're in a band. He, he starts a jam. Yeah. Immediately, I can I can pick it up and boom, and yeah. follow from there. And next thing, and that thing goes and like it. Yeah, it's like jazz, man. Like that, improv, like improv, music? Yeah, yeah, it's like improv, man. That's yeah, you cool. just have to go back and forth, and you know, you have to read each other. You know, like I have, like if we're yeah. playing music, I have to look at what everybody's doing. If we're just gonna kind of jam or whatever, same thing in jiu-jitsu. You start you know? a, a technique or start one idea, yeah, yeah. concept, and right away pick up from there, like in a continue. It's like a music now because yeah. I think then he sees it, and then he takes, he picks from there, he take, end up in a whole different direction, and it's yeah, yeah. like. Oh, I like that even better because I didn't expect that ending to that idea and kind of yeah. how it flows through. In a, anyways, oh, cool. and lastly, and do you guys have a uh, just so I can put on a, a website or people want to? Uh, yeah, they want to find us. Uh, we're on on Facebook, uh, Crowbar on Facebook. Okay. Um, Crowbar Music on uh, Twitter. Okay. And uh, Crowbar Music on Instagram as well. Oh, this is awesome! You know, and. Just do you guys check it out. I mean, if you're in the music, in the music, in the, if you like heavy metal, you you you, you know about the, their brand and everything that's going on. But if you don't know, hey, this guy is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. It takes many years to do, and we are very proud of him. And very proud to have him uh, in the Machado lineage. Thank you. So, thanks so much. All right, and I want the guys in Brazil. Okay, I'll send to a lot of guys in Brazil this video here. Take care. But you'll love it.